Dandara is a 2D metroidvania game out for the PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC this week. Playing as heroine Dandara, who is loosely based on the real-life historical figure as she works to liberate those oppressed in the world of salt that's being conquered by outside forces. Dandara tells the story of the world of salt, aka the creation and its citizens. This world was a beautiful and lovely place that lived in a peaceful balance. That balance, however, was interrupted and became an oppression when the Eldarian army beyond the Colossal Bridge started to take over the once tranquil land. Thus, out of the crib of creation comes Dandara, a being and heroine of higher power here to return the balance and free the people from their prison. That freedom won't come without a fight, though. Dandara must travel through the remains of the Salt World seeking help from those in hiding like Johnny B and Tarsila. With the help of remnants from the creation, Dandara unlocks new abilities that will aid her on her journey to free the rest of the world and destroy the Aldarian army. Dandara features an absorbing story that pulls you in slowly with every conversation had. You're not given a lot of information regarding the overall story from the start, instead little pieces of information are dropped with every on-screen text conversation and interaction that happen when you find a new remnant of the creation. Dandara herself is based on the real-life historical figure Dandara dos Palamares, who fought to protect Afro-Brazilian slaves in the 17th century. Equipped with her skills in Afro-Brazilian martial arts, she fought the oppression brought upon her people until she eventually was arrested. In confinement, she committed suicide, refusing to return to a life of slavery. Although a lot of the stories surrounding her vary and are minimal in details, her spirit lives on and inspires the heroine in this video game. Dandara's one and only game mode is its campaign mode and it's handled with the Metroidvania gameplay. That means that throughout the game you'll find yourself exploring an interconnected world that doesn't always paint a straightforward path to follow. It's up to you the player to explore the salt world and getting new abilities thus unlocking previously unreachable pathways seen previously. Dandara starts off with a pretty minimal set of skills and it does start to grow over time as the world opens up alongside your powers. From the start you can pretty much define gravity by jumping onto patches of salt scattered throughout the world. With an analog stick, you control an arrow that tells the game the general direction of where you want to go to. It'll lock onto the nearest patch of salt you can hop to. With the press of the X button, you can charge up a shot and fire a blast towards the direction you're pointing at. Now something interesting about the controls is that since this game is being released on mobile phones, the developers have actually added those same touchscreen controls to the Switch version. It's completely optional to use of course. You essentially tap on icons to use the item being shown, and swipe on the right side of the Switch to jump towards the direction you swipe to, and do the same thing for the left side to shoot. It technically works, but not well enough for outside of the first hour where things start to pick up and more precise, quicker controls are required. For that very reason, I stayed tied to a physical controller when playing it on PC and on Switch. Moving on, as you explore through the world of Salt, you'll come across a ton of different things. There's enemies that come in different shapes, sizes, and movement patterns. They're pretty easy at first, but get increasingly more challenging as you get deeper into the story. Sometimes they'll walk in place on surface, other times they'll be hidden away and appear when you're nearby, and others can fly towards you. You always have to be quick on your feet and with your weapon to dodge enemy charges and fire back with an attack at the same time. Puzzles also come in the form of pathways and obstacles in front of certain pathways. Usually puzzles are pretty straightforward where a door is being blocked by a switch or a wall that can't be entered without a certain power. The game never tells you if a certain pathway is the next path you need to take though, so you sort of need to spend time exploring parts of the map you haven't reached yet, looking for abilities that you can uncover and use in previously blocked routes. Other puzzles are essentially really specific routes that lead you through a certain area of a room. Since you can only jump from a salt patch to a salt patch, some areas are only accessible from certain angles of a room. The game uses that to its advantage and pushes the player to follow a specific route in a mess of routes in order to reach, for example, a door in the middle of a room that can only be reached through the middle section of the room. Throw into this a bunch of switches, enemies, and moving platforms and well you end up with quite a challenge. That's where your powers come into play. You have a minimal set of skills to begin with, but as you explore your surroundings you'll find citizens of the creation with their own abilities and tools that'll help you on your journey. Johnny B, for example, will give you the ability to shoot rocket arrows that can break down certain walls, and they can be a pretty handy weapon too. These powers, including your health gauge, can all be upgraded using salt. Salt is the currency in this game, and you gather bits of it when breaking objects or defeating enemies. That brings us to campsites, or the checkpoints in this game. Campsites are where you go to heal yourself, refuel energy for your powers, and upgrade your abilities using salt. If you die, you'll return to the last campsite you visited, and at times that's really useful, and it can also be really annoying. 
Capsides don't really come in abundance in this game, so if you're stuck at a boss fight where you keep dying at the top of the pathway, you will find yourself respawning to the very bottom of the pathway at a campsite, having to constantly make that trip to the boss from the campsite over and over again. It can get quite annoying, especially if you're trying to fight a boss with full health, only to get her constantly having to redo the trip to get to the boss fight. During those moments, I wish there was an option to continue the game from the start of that boss fight, something like Kingdom Hearts that lets the player either restart the fight or continue from the last save. One handy feature though is a spirit that's left behind when you die. If you spend a long time gathering salt only to die and have to return to a campsite, you can actually go back to where you died and gather the remaining salt you left behind. There's also a handy map that you can pull up to keep track of what you've uncovered. It can use a bit of work though too. Sometimes when exploring a room, it'll actually rotate to fit the orientation of Dandara. It can be a bit confusing as when you pull up a map, it doesn't always flip to match your orientation. You can be moving up from your perspective but actually be moving to the right instead. It can be a bit confusing to keep track of. I also would have appreciated if the game paused while I pulled up the map. There were times where I had to double check the map because of the orientation issue I mentioned earlier, only to be sneak attacked by an enemy during that pause moment. Those moments felt rather cumbersome and annoying. Overall though, I thought Dandara's gameplay was entertaining and challenging. The specific pathway puzzles kept me searching and exploring labyrinths that ultimately ended with a sense of self-satisfaction when I was finally able to understand which route was the correct one. Finding new powers was always a treat as it further opened up the world and the arsenal of abilities for me to use. It certainly wasn't a walk in the park either though. Certain routes were challenging thanks to the abundance of enemies at hand, that challenge only got tougher as it progressed through the game, taking on stronger enemies and boss fights included. Boss fights in particular always had me thinking quick on my feet as I tried to dodge oncoming attacks with a not so traditional sense of movement, all while sending back my own attacks. I certainly died a ton of times with each boss fight, but the satisfaction felt worth it. There are some design choices that I think add some unnecessary challenge and padding to the gameplay, like the very far apart campsites that have you ultimately having to repeat the route over and over again, along with the map not pausing the game. Dandara has a lovely and charming pixel art style to it. It looks a bit retro, but it's detailed while also having a fast paced fluid animation. Although at first glance the graphics may look simple, I love that the developers actually added extra details to things that would normally just be simple or even static. Having Dandara jump from one platform to another gives off this dust residue coming off the ground and lifting up to the air. Even having Dandara stand still, you can sort of see the color shift in her hair and clothing, and it gives her sprite this look of a wind breeze hitting her. It's small touches like that that I found the most visually appealing in the game. I would have loved to see a bit more use of lighting effects in the pixel art though, as that's just one of my favorite touches and trends in pixel art games lately. Playing this on a large 4K TV, the game looks great, and the same goes for the smaller display on the Nintendo Switch. Dandara has a beautifully composed soundtrack. A new track plays along with each of the background environments in the game, along with sound effects to match the area's theme. The Woods, for example, has a nice calming tune featuring some birds chirping in the background. It all meshes together well with the visuals on screen. Move over to one of the more sci-fi looking areas and the atmosphere changes up to an eerie isolated tone, one of darkness yet curiosity. There isn't any voice dialogue. Conversations instead have this typing sound effect as they're written out but they do change up for the bosses to make them sound a bit more ominous. I would have liked to see a slight change in the sound effect pitch for each of the characters to make them feel a bit more unique from each other. Dandara is an entertaining and challenging 2D Metroidvania game. It tells an interesting story that's very symbolic and inspired by an even larger than life real life heroine. There's a few design choices that I think could have been improved like the placement of the campsites and the way the overworld map was handled, but overall I think the package was enjoyable and fun while being presented with a marvelous looking art style and a head bopping soundtrack. If you're up for the challenge, I think Dandara is definitely worth looking into. That does it for my review of Dandara for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. If you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below, or just hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat. Those links are in the description down below. As always, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed these type of reviews, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing for more content just like this. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day, and keep on gaming.